After a three-game sweep this past week over the Wichita Thunder, the Idaho Steelheads on a six-game winning streak travel east to Wheeling, West Virginia for a three-and-three three weekend. Cam McGuire here sitting alongside forward Wade Murphy. Well, Murph, thank you for the time here today. Yeah, no problem, Cam. Anytime. Going to go a little around the world here, but want to start first with uh, this past weekend over Wichita. Anytime you can get a sweep, especially in front of your home fans, is pretty nice. Yeah, it was nice. I think everyone played really well this weekend. Uh, three games were great. Um, you know, I think, uh, you know, we showed our offense and defense at the same time. You know, most of the guys coming back, a couple new faces, you know, getting used to the systems and everything. But I thought we played great, uh, you know, a couple of close games. But we need to win those games to, to get uh, more points in later in the season. Looking back to last Wednesday night, it was an 8-2 win for you guys. We chatted after the game about your Gordie Howe hat trick. And yeah. you mentioned uh, we might not see you drop the gloves for a little bit now. Yeah, it's, it's obviously a little rare that it happens. But, you know, here at the moment, you got to do it. Uh, you know, I used to fight back a little more back in the day. But uh, it's pretty fun. Uh, I kind of missed the adrenaline. But it's, uh, it was good, I thought. You know, it was all right. Talk about how it all kind of escalated. Obviously, Nick Canade took that hit up high, and then you yeah. kind of stepping up and sticking up for your teammate uh, right below us here. Yeah, just, uh, you know, I saw the hit like last second, the score in my eye, and uh, just, you know, just try to make, you know, make a statement, just try to, you know, protect your teammates and hit, hit the guy a little bit. So it was, um, yeah, he's, like I said, it doesn't happen often, but when time's right, you got to do it. So that's basically what happened. Usually Nick Kanade is the guy that's sticking up for teammates. So yeah. I'm sure he was nice to, to be on, well, maybe somewhat nice to be on the other end. I'm sure he didn't like the hit, but yeah. nice to have a teammate stick up for him. Yeah, it was good. Like Nicky always protects yeah. us all the time. So it's been, uh, you know, you got to do it for him. And uh, he's a warrior in the ice, so he would do it any day for us. So. It's good. Looking at Friday's game, a 5-4 overtime victory over the Thunder. It took defenseman Dawson Barteau just 83 seconds in to end the game. It started back in the defensive end, and then you guys led the rush up the ice. Just kind of talk about that play. Yeah, I think Bart made a great play of the blue line. I stood the guy up, and uh, it was a loose puck for me, and I just tried to find Bicer, the playmaker of the line. So, um, yeah, it was a great play. Uh, find Bart uh, in the high slot. Just get the puck on that. Sometimes the simpler play is the yeah. better play. He just, you know, threw on that good shot, and fortunately went in, and you know, I got the two points. The extra points huge, so it's good. Two points is two points, but you know, from your guys' perspective inside the locker room, not necessarily pleased with how you guys played. Yeah. Thought you could have uh, performed a little better in some areas, but you get the two points, and then you guys are able to find another two on Saturday night. Another uh, thriller right down to the finish there, four three. So finding different ways to win earlier in the season is a, a huge confidence. It's a boost. Great sign, I think. It's uh, you know, good teams early in the season find ways to get points and win. So it's uh, it's good. Uh, the, Friday and Saturday's game were both very close, so it was good. Talk about your guys' line. Obviously, I know your connection with Ty Pelt and Bice. You guys played a lot together last year and have become super close off the ice, but you get a newcomer this year in Mark Rassel, and the three of you guys are off to a fine start. Just talk about how well you guys complement each other. Yeah, Rass is a great addition to this team. Uh, he's a great locker room guy and obviously a great player. Um, you know, we call him the worm because he's always in like the dirty areas yeah. and gets like the easy, not easy goals, but he's always in the right place at the right time. So. Uh, yeah, like usually Bicer is obviously the playmaker, kind of the steady Eddie back there. And uh, no, it's been good overall. Uh, like you said, Bicer, I played a lot last year together and hang out every single day. So um, no, I think it's a great three right now. We got to keep going here. All right, well, they call Mark Rassel the worm. What do they call yourself and Ty Pelton Bice? For me, it's just Murph. That's pretty simple. Uh, and Bicer, yeah, it's Bicer. It's not really too simple. If it's him, the new guy would kind of make him more comfortable. Exactly. Give him a nickname, you know? Do so. we have a, is there a, a, a nickname for this line circulating? I feel like we need to get on that. Yeah, we, I don't have anything right now, but okay. I think maybe give me a couple week, week or two. I think we'll we'll think of something. But we're all different, kind of different characters in our own way off the ice. So it's, uh, we'll think of something. You, you three did, Stooges, maybe. You know, in know. Miracle, they had the Coneheads, those three guys, maybe something yeah. like that. Well, Mark and Raz and Bice are pretty smart. So I could be part of the Conehead, but those two, uh, yeah, we'll think of something. Maybe. That could be yeah. your nickname, the Conehead. Just the Conehead. The Conehead. Like suits. Yeah. <laughs> Looking back, uh, obviously last season, I know we've talked about it before, but obviously a surplus of returners, I believe 16 right now on the roster from last mm -hmm. year. How easy f for it was you to, to make the decision to come back this year? Super easy. Yeah, no, I didn't take a, a second for me to think about it. Just I talked to Sheener and a few other guys, and it's everyone's coming back, so there's no better place to play. I think it's just everyone's so close. Um, you know, talk to each other, and you know, through the summer, everyone keeps in touch. It's it was it's been great. So. Um, yeah, it's nice coming to the training camp, knowing everybody 
little less nerves and just more smooth transition, I find. So it was good overall. Seems like you're fitting in nice to the state of Idaho, too. You've got the flannel shirt on, uh, so you're getting you're getting acclimated to, to, the, uh, to got, the west out here. Yeah, I got a truck, too, and plaid, so I'm trying to, you know, fit the fit the city and the state, yeah. What, what, what did you hear about Boise before you came last year? Great city, great fans. I've had a lot of, lot of ex-friends and players that have played here, and they said nothing but good things. Um, yeah, it's very similar to home, too. It's only 10 hours from where I'm from, so um, easy for the family and friends to come down and watch the game or visit. So, no, the city and the fans have been unbelievable, and that's, that's yeah, just everything's been great so far. This is your eighth pro season. You spent a handful of seasons in the ECHL, uh, yeah. five different teams before kind of becoming a, a staple here in Idaho. And I want to look back. Obviously, you played a couple years in the ECHL. Then you went overseas for three years. Yeah. And last year, you had kind of credited going to overseas was kind of a, a reset button. Yeah. Talk about that a little bit, and then obviously a decision to come back to North America. Yeah, uh, Europe was great for me. I, mean, I loved all three years there. Uh, like you said, it was kind of like a reset. Uh, button for me. I, I learned a lot playing on the bigger ice. You kind of learn how, learn how to skate. You have to skate really well. But um, yeah, and coming back here, I just felt like just way more fresh, just mentally and physically. Just you know, a little older, a little more mature. Um, yeah, this has been the perfect spot for me. I've loved every second I've been here in Boise. So. So you were in Slovakia, right, for all three years? Uh, Norway for two, two, and then Slovenia for one, and both were different in their own ways. Yeah. But both, both great. Uh, Norway, very proper, nice country, but cold, but. <laughs> Um, and Slovenia was awesome too, just, just different. So, um, you know, it really helped me grow up as, you know, as a person as well and in hockey as well. What were the cultures like over there? Obviously a little bit different than uh, Canada and the U.S.? A little bit different, yeah. Norway was more like structured and like, clean and like very, um, yeah, it's, it was, it's very good. And Slovenia, just more Eastern Europe, so a little more, uh, you can get away with more stuff. It's, it's a little different, but they're both great in their own way. You've been a traveling man. Hockey's taken you to a lot of different places, and, and yeah. you grew up in Victoria, British Columbia. What was it like growing up there? Awesome. Yeah, Victoria is great, especially in the summertime. I enjoy you know, going back for a couple months and fishing, but you know, it's a hockey town for sure. Hockey's the one thing. So um, you know, I was fortunate enough to you know, play in teams there and teams in Vancouver. So um, no, it's been great. It's, there's really growing in Victoria now, more hockey rings and stuff. It's great to see. But um, yeah, I loved Victoria. It's, it's my spot. It's my spot. So are most fans up there Canucks fans? Or? Most would be Canucks fans. Yeah. I was kind of the guy that like, always growing up being the opposite. So I like Dallas. It's funny enough. That really? I like Dallas, yeah. Okay. Mike Medano was my favorite player. Started watching hockey in 99 when they won the Cup. Nice. So maybe that's why. But I was always the guy like, eh, I didn't like Vancouver. But now I cheer for them. They're now doing well do. right now. They so are doing well. It's good to see. You're a big sports guy, too. I know you're a, a big Seahawks fan. Oh, yeah. Tough loss on Very Sunday, tough. though. That's not, that's Did you not watch? Our, I watched a quarter and I realized we weren't playing our best. That's that's not the Seahawks I know, but <laughs> so you turned it off after I turned quarter it off. one. Yeah, after yeah, it was not good, but oh well. Hey, so another week. Still tied for first in the division. Still too. tied, yeah, it's good. We talked over the summer. You've been to what's the name of the Sea? I can't think uh, of Century Link Field. Yeah, and it's pretty electric. It's huh? pretty sweet. Yeah, it was my first time going actually to a live game uh, about a month and a half ago, and it's it's pretty electric. Yeah. It was awesome time with my family, but it was it's pretty cool experience. Is football big up in British Columbia? It's getting bigger, yeah. The CFL's up there, yeah. but it's it's not the NFL, obviously. So, but we still have our BC Lions. who are also in the playoffs right now. Yep. Semifinals, I think, are this Sunday. So, but it's, it's definitely mainly NFL. What drew you into the Seahawks then? Closest, the closest team. Closest team, yeah. yeah. All my buddies are friends, and I would say yeah, majority of BC is Seahawks fans. So it's just kind of followed and. Yeah, that's basically it. Staying on the topic of sports, I also know you're a, a big baseball guy. What did you oh, yeah. think of the World Series there? Loved it. That, that was one of the best you think so? series. Oh, that Texas one was, yeah. Really? Diamondbacks See, I thought too. a lot of the games were kind of like blowouts, like uh, some of them. Maybe, or are you just talking from a team perspective? Teams, yeah, like the Diamondbacks were like a bottom-ranked team going into the playoffs right. and going that far. So like anything can happen in baseball. Texas like, was too, didn't they lose like 27 yeah. of their final 34? Yeah, exactly. Come down to pitching. Yeah. That's what it was, so. And it's you've great. you've been to a lot of ballparks, from what I remember. I think I've been to almost all but five or six. So you, about 25, 24. You know the five that you haven't been to? Uh, the cities I've been, yeah, like both Texas. I've never been to Arlington or Houston, but uh, a couple other ones. Just growing up, every hockey tournament, whatever yeah. city was kind of near me, and my old man would go and try and catch a game. If it's an hour or two away, we'd still make the drive just because he's a big baseball fan. Even I, minor league, too, you've been to a league, lot. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I've been to a dozen or so. What's minor your league favorite games. minor league ballpark you've been to? I like the Knoxville. Knoxville Cubs. It's Knoxville dub, Cubs. Yeah, double, double A, a for Chicago. Yeah, nice. pretty, I did not know nice that. Park, modern, so it's good ball, good beer. There you go. Yeah. Well, we talk about nicknames, and you mentioned earlier this summer you do have a couple nicknames other than Murph. Uh, can you tell the fans a little bit about those, some that you were given at younger ages? 
Oh yeah, Fra and well, Kramer, Kramer was in there. Yeah, Kramer is one. Yeah, so obviously I had very curly hair and didn't really comb it as much as I should. So I very I looked like Kramer. That's and uh, guy from the Stooges. What's his yeah, name? Curly. Curly, yeah, Curly. Curly. You share so a birthday with him. Share I remember you saying that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how did you find that out? That's kind of a random fact. Yeah, I just I don't know. My, my old man's a um, fan of the Stooges, and he said he looked up his birthday and just yeah, just, that's it, Curly. Ho hopefully, say he didn't say you look like Curly too. No, that's not good. Is it? No, you don't want that, do you? No, maybe same hair, but it's the same hair, but not not looks. Let's go. Let's go with that. Yeah. Well, back to your playing days. Uh, obviously, you grew up playing in Victoria, British Columbia, and you played junior hockey in the British Columbia Hockey League and, and won a championship. Just walk us through kind of your junior days, playing time with uh, Penticton and winning the championship. Yeah, yeah. Well, I originally started in Victoria, my hometown, for a year and a half, and then got traded in the trade deadline. So what was that? What was that like getting traded there? You know it was coming, or it was, we knew it was coming. Yeah. We weren't doing too well in the standings, and about half our team was kind of a fire sale. So half our team got got traded to a different league or team. So, but I was very fortunate to go to Penticton, uh, you know, first class organization. I've done had a lot of yeah. success lately. So, you no, know, I love the city there. The team was obviously pretty good. So, um, yeah, very smooth transition. First time living away from home too at 17 is, you know, kind of young, but. Uh, you know, it's great billets, great fans, and it was awesome. I'm really happy I went there. You guys won the championship, and then you won the RBC Cup as well. Tell us a little bit about that. Obviously, some people might be unfamiliar with what, what is that. Yeah, yeah, the RBC Cup is the national championship in uh, Junior A Canada. So um, each each province has a team that represents. Uh, so, yeah, we, you represent your t uh, province there. And, yeah, we did well. Uh, we started 0 2 in the tournament and then if you, if you lose three you're you're done and eliminated so we had to win the next five wow and we're fortunate to do that so it was it's kind of a scary moment yeah. pretty intense but it was pretty fun and it was it was awesome life's on the line every night life's on the line it was pretty it was pretty cool and so. then after that it was college hockey but before we get into that were you always set on college hockey you didn't get dre uh, pulled into the major junior route no i was i was late bloomer growing up so pretty small so i really never had any interest from the western league ever so yeah, I was. We were taught younger to you know go to college and get more time to develop your career and as a person and get an education as well. So, you no know, college for me was always the plan. Um, didn't know where at the time or, but you no, know, I was like I said, late bloomer, school first, and that's what I did. Well, yeah, you ended up first two years at the University of North Dakota, a pretty darn good program. How'd you end up there? Yeah, I um, just got recruited by Dave Hackstall. Um, you know, my last year of junior, um, went for fly down, and it's a pretty spectacular rank. If you've ever been there, it's it's a pretty good spot, but um, yeah, I enjoyed my time there. Um, you know, we, our team's really strong teams, and you know, you learn a lot as a, as a hockey player there as well. So, no, it was two good years. Pretty cold climate up there. So then you shifted to Arizona State. How'd you end up there? Yeah, <laughs> two opposite probably schools. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was. It was. Yeah, I got rec recruited by Greg Powers, um, and I also fly down, and it was it was pretty spectacular as well. Completely different from Grand Forks, but it's warm weather, nice nice campus, and everything. So it was. Uh, New program as well. I kind of wanted a little fresh start from college um, as well at the time. So, um, yeah, that was basically the decision. Like we mentioned, the Steelheads hitting the road this weekend, a 3-3 three and three against the Wheeling Nailers. You're pretty familiar with 3-3 three and three weekends, beginning your career out <laughs> east in the, the North Division. I yeah. mean, just walk us through the process of uh, kind of the, the toll that it takes in your body and then how you prepare for that. It's tough to prepare for. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, like three and threes usually those third games are just like systems and yeah. a little slower but also a little more mistakes everyone's so tired but uh yeah i haven't played them in a while but all i remember is you could got focus like all three games like um stick to your systems like not not wear yourself out all three games you know you kind of not pace yourself but you gotta you know play hard but get ready for all three games make sure you're not like play too well in one lousy so they're, they're definitely tough to prepare for, but I think we're, we can do it for sure. So you're saying you don't miss them almost every weekend? No, I do not miss those. No, those are those days are sometimes long or long road trips, let's say at least. And Wheeling, West Virginia. I've never been to Wheeling. What can you tell us about it? There's uh, it's there's some stuff to do. Yeah, there's uh, a couple of places. Um, you know, the rink's nice. Uh, kind of an old old mining old town. Old mining, yeah. I think nails, yeah. nail town. So um, hence the nailers. Hence the nailers. That's I think that's why I got it. Yeah, um, yeah, it's. It's all right. They got good fans, good history there. Yeah. So it's, uh, yeah, just, it's been good. Back here with Steelheads forward Wade Murphy. Murph, it's time for our five random questions segment here, and I'm going to hit you it. with the first one. Uh, if you could be any age the rest of your life, which age would you select? 21. Really? Why is uh, that? Because I, <laughs> I feel like you're kind of an adult because you obviously are 21, yes. but you're still young enough to kind of be a kid. So it's kind of like a nice hybrid. Like, 
you're old enough to make decisions as an adult, but you can kind of still be a kid at the same time, maybe. And your 21st birthday, you can never go wrong. You can never Depending go wrong. Depending how you look at it. It's always a bad time, I heard, the 21st birthday. Yeah, adrenaline rush yeah. is pretty low, I it's heard. boring. Yeah. All right, 21 years old, Wade Murphy wants to go back in time. This is a two-part question here. Sure. Uh, you're a pretty fast guy on the ice. Uh, if you could gift your speed to anyone on the Steelheads, who would you give it to and why? <laughs> Uh, I would I would have said Franklin, but he was buzzing this week. Yeah, he was. But he was flying. He was buzzing. I can't do that to Frank. <laughs> oh man, I'll say Bicer because I can I can say okay. I can you say, can say that to him. him? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I, fair I can, enough. I can give it to him a little more. Not so. that he's a slow guy he's not by slow, any means, but, but if you want to give him your speed, yeah. sometimes he pick it up. What <laughs> uh, before I get to the, so the second part here, and then I want to ask you something else about that. If you're skilled, we've seen that before. But if you could have anyone skill on the team, who would you select? Zlotti's hands are yeah, pretty nice. You like him. Watching the shootout today, maybe like Zlotti shoot up moves. Let's go with that. He's pretty. He's pretty relaxed and confident, and he's he's slick out there. Probably Zlotti's hands. All right, Ben Zlotti. Ben Zlotti. Before we get to the next one, we talk about your speed, and oftentimes last year, and we've seen it early in this season, uh, your little jump over the bench. <laughs> what I mean, where where did this start from, and and, and I mean, what what is this? Yeah, I, people call it like a kangaroo hop. <laughs> like I put like one hand. I don't. I mean, I see if my blades on the skates or. Seems easier than playing the two legs over at a time. Just doing a little hop. I've done it forever, like ever. So it is. I don't know. It's for, called, it's kangaroo hop. It seems easier for me than the, the legs. I don't know. Yeah, for fans that are unfamiliar, Wade Murphy just slingshots out of the bench. Doesn't even put one leg out. Just two feet up. Two feet. Kind good, of a good, vertic jump. good vertical. Yeah, lead. Vertical, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right. Question three. Go to karaoke song. I like Eric Church Springsteen because I know the words and it's yeah. easy and to sing along. You don't have to look at the screen. Don't look at the screen, yeah. And then you can change like the the mem or the vibe a little okay. bit in the song. You make it a little different. So that's that's probably Eric. Yeah, Springsteen. Eric classic. Church. Everyone Fair. knows it too. Fair enough. Yeah. Question four here: Who's your celebrity crush? I like Margot Robbie or Natalie Portman. Margot Robbie. So maybe she's Margot the Robbie one. now and then Natalie Portman. Is she girl. the Barbie? Was she Barbie? She was Barbie. Yeah. She's okay. Wolf of Wall Street. Yep. Yeah. And then who's the other one? Natalie Portman, but when I was like growing up, she's more like older now. Oh, she's, but she's older. Uh, no strings attached. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. A couple yeah, other yeah. ones, but she's those two, I would say. Those nice. two stick out. Lastly, here, I, I know you you frequent on the golf course a good a bit, yeah, a uh, good amount English there. Uh, yeah. Um, one golf course that is is your dream to play that you haven't been able to cross off yet. Probably like Pebble Beach in, in California or something. Uh, here, I like quail a lot, yeah. but a um, couple ones back home. Or I try to play a lot, but Pebble Beach. I just started a couple of years ago, so yeah. I don't think I have the, the game to play Pebble Beach right now. But you know, I, that's that w that wind and rain yeah, might should, get it you. Should help me, yeah, with my slice too. Yeah. Now would would we break a hundred at Pebble Beach or we'd break a hundred easily? T depending. Easily. Okay. Hundred. Yeah, All right. Well, maybe maybe we'll have to get a GoFundMe and we'll get you to Pebble like, Beach because sure. it's not cheap. No, it's not. No, definitely not. All right, Murph. Thanks for the time. Appreciate yeah. it, and best of luck this weekend. Awesome. Thank you, Cam. Appreciate it.